What we're going to be talking about today is a technical price pattern that uh, we're quite interested in, especially if you're a shorter term trader, this can be a very interesting pattern. It's called a dead cat bounce, and it's kind of a continuation of our discussion about gaps. Gaps are very interesting to technical analysts, and we've talked about how to identify gaps in markets that close and have a nice big break, like the stock market, for example, as well as how to find that same sentiment that drives a gap in the stock market into 24-7 or 24-5 markets like uh, the Forex, etc. Those same kinds of behaviors exist, and you can apply the same kinds of trading strategies. Well, a dead cat bounce is an example of one of these. We're going to be talking about it primarily from the perspective of the stock market, but the concepts here are definitely transferable. A dead cat bounce is a bearish pattern, as you would probably assume from the name, and it, it's pretty simple. Essentially, the market is moving down at some point. It creates a gap here. So this is, uh, this is where the, the technical trigger has occurred. So we get this gap and the market continues on to the downside. Now what is not uncommon at all is for the market to get a little overextended. A gap represents an extreme in market sentiment. So what happens is that uh, traders will, when the market gets a little overextended or a little overly committed to a particular uh, direction in the market, a retracement so a move back up to the bottom or top of this gap. This gap now becomes our resistance range. So a retracement to the bottom, very common here, or, or the top of this particular gap will is quite likely to occur. So we'll watch for that. Here's an example. We're going to look at a chart. This is Goldman Sachs. Now, this is actually an update of a video we did last year. And the chart that you're looking at right now it was the example that we were looking at in 2008. Goldman Sachs gap down, it came back up very quickly, so this is a short term opportunity, it came back up very quickly to the bottom of that gap and that's where we start to look for our trade trigger. So we start to look for where's the, where's the opportunity, is this just to peel off that resistance level, which is a likelihood at this point, then we get ready to make our trade. Now that can be taken advantage of in a number of different ways. So uh, obviously if you're trading just stocks, you could short the stock at this point. I find that options traders uh, get, a, get a lot of use out of this particular pattern as a short term strategy. So they're buying a shorter term option, a put option in this case, or they may even be selling a call. Let's say they're selling a call up above the upper resistance level. That's also not a bad idea at all because uh, if you buy an option, uh, the, one of the reasons why buying a put is so attractive is that you have a limited risk. Your risk is limited to the price of the option. Now, puts are expensive, so th th that although your risk is limited, there's still a fair amount of it. So you really want that market to move a lot. That's why you're looking for a big move. Now, it's not unreasonable for us to expect this. I mean, consider this. Traders will often say the market does not crash up. It only crashes down. So you're kind of putting things in, on you, in your favor. You're looking for uh, bearish momentum, which is indicative of uncertainty. You get uh, prone to panics. So we like to see uh, a broad market trend to the downside. We would like to see a downtrend in the uh, stock itself that we're trading. We'd love to see the gap represent a larger than average move. So if we can see all of these things lining up to represent extremely bearish market uh, sentiment, then this retracement, we have a much higher likelihood for it to uh, go down, uh, start heading back down to the downside. Let's look at another example. This chart is AGP. We can see the same kind of setup, a little bit different resistance level, but as you can see, it hits that resistance level, begins to peel off, and that's where our opportunity is. So now that we've talked a little bit about how to identify the opportunity and how to enter the trade, we can start to think about, all right, well, how would we forecast where that trade may go? There's some really really cool things you can do with Fibonacci retracements to identify a likely profit target. So you can start to think about, well, based on how much I have at risk, what's my profit potential? What's, my, what's a good estimate for some profit potential? We're going to be getting to that in part two.